in our wide world segment today we are going to sneakertopia at the art science museum at marina bay sands uh, joining us now in the studio steve harris the ceo and co-founder of sneakertopia and honor harger the vice president of attractions at marina bay sands those of you who don't know about sneakertopia it is an exhibit of famous shoes of street art of videos of posters of models of all kinds of things that have to do with limited edition and famous and some not so limited edition sneakers and steve and honor it's a pleasure to have you both in the studio today steve why don't we start with you give us the overview of sneaker topia oh hang on just a second steve sorry steve why don't you go ahead and give us the overview of sneaker topia the overview of sneaker topia is it's a celebration of the icons and idols of sneaker culture in sports music film and television art and fashion and uh, in this iteration and evolution of Sneakertopia, which started in L.A. in 2019, we are really excited about the new artists that we have locally that are part of the show. So originally in L.A., it, it, was, it was always very um, uh, internationally uh, cast. So we, in L.A., we had artists from Korea and Canada, um, uh, local artists, New York artists. Here we have... Um, 13 additional artists from Singapore, your hometown, included within it. So it's expanded, evolved, and it's really all about what sneaker culture is. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a very inclusive culture that, is, uh, that uh, doesn't discriminate against age, race, income. Uh, it's, it's a culture that people love and that they're able to connect through you know, their, their love and passion for sneakers. So many questions. Uh, so many questions I want to ask you about this, about the sneakers or trainers, as I still mm -hmm. call them. Um, what is it that you think has made this really explode? Because it has in the last five or 10 years, I've got friends of mine in Singapore, their children are actively buying and selling these limited edition sneakers. They're going to sneak affairs and trainer events. What is it about this phenomenon that has really made it explode in the last few years? You know, it's, it's, when you look at, you know, the, the history of sneakers, which has been around about 150, 170 years, and in the evolution of the explosion that you're, that you're uh, referencing, it's always evolving. Like, when I was younger, people didn't buy, sell, and trade sneakers. And if you wanted to buy a pair of sneakers, it was what you had access to locally. You didn't have, you didn't have the internet and, uh, and apps and, you know, people that were that were um uh uh had a whole second market for mm -hmm. what you if you didn't live within a vicinity or go visit your family on vacation like you never had access to that sneaker and now instantaneously so i think that um uh, that explosion that you're talking about is matching the uh, the evolution of technology mm. that literally has made the world flat and everybody again yeah. more connected and more accessible let's bring in honor harger the vice president of attractions at marina bay sands and honor why why is this fun for you to bring this particular uh exhibit to the art science museum the art science museum has done so many amazing uh, things over the years but why this one yeah, so I, I've had the pleasure of being in charge of Art Science Museum for, for, for nine years. And we think of ourselves as a museum, which is a different kind of museum. And some of the projects that we exhibit in Art Science Museum sort of sit between, you know, kind of uh, cultures. We yeah. do art, we do science, we do tech, we do culture. And and, and that, that um, uh, I guess, kind of interdisciplinary uh, kind of focus gives us the platform to be able to bring stories and cultures into the museum that are often not seen in mm, a museum. Yeah. And I think sneaker culture and street culture more widely is a really good example of this, you know, kind of it's creativity, self-expression, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, collecting, which is happening, uh, you know, kind of outside the context of, you know, kind of museums and institutions. And what's really interesting about sneaker culture and what we really enjoyed when we dove into this exhibition is all of the interrelationships between sneaker culture, hip hop, uh, you know, right. kind of the film scene, sports, uh, you know, kind of fashion and technology, and how these subcultures, you know, kind of interweave and interconnect, kind of 
uh, you know, really form something that deserves respect and deserves mm. the kind of attention and uh, kind of focused uh, I, I focused attention that you get when you put something in a museum. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Steve, funny. yeah it's, Steve, go ahead. Yeah. It, it's funny as you said that Honor gave me chills because Mr. Sabotage his collection when when Honor said uh, collectors and people collect. Back in the day, you you know how many people that have come to Sneakotopia and be like, oh, I used to have those. Right. They th I thrashed them. I threw them out. <laughs> I had no idea they were going to be worth thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. Like. Wow. Even as even as worn out ones, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know it's it's interesting. And Steve, when uh, we're talking with Steve Harris, CEO of Sneakertopia, and Honor Harger, the uh, vice president of attractions at MBS, and, and Steve, were you surprised at at any of the curated regional or local sneakers that you that you've seen here in the attraction? Because they're at the attraction at Art Science Museum. There is a lot uh, from local artists and local collectors. Anything strike strike you from that? Um, surprised in, you know, some of the items and artifacts you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking about Mr. Sabotage. Like yeah. his, I, I've, I've met people that have a couple of pairs, mm -hmm. uh, like he has, but to have such an extensive collection of, you know, that time period of Jordans and dunks and the different colorways. And, and, you know, and the, the one thing, like, a lot of people don't realize there's there is a you know, the story behind every single sneaker. So when you see sabotage, it's just, the, I'm just we have a lot of sneakers there, but just his collection alone, like we talk about the 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 artifacts in one place, yeah. and telling the story of like he has the jerseys next to it. So you're like, oh, okay, that's why they made that color. Because yeah, they made the dunks for you know for each college, and it's just tell us about sabotage amazing. a little bit for those of our listeners that might not be familiar. Oh, you could tell about Sabotage. Right? So Mr. Sabotage is uh, a, a sneaker customizer who's globally renowned. Um, you know, he's been uh, kind of basic designing sneakers, but also, you know, customizing sneakers for, for over 20 years. Mm. And he's from Singapore. Nice. And so, you know, being able to bring, you know, a true Singapore legend kind of into the museum mm -hmm. with his his own collection, as we as we heard, he's he's got one of the most extraordinary collection of of Nike Dunks maybe in the world, mm -hmm. um, and he's very generously loaned us a you know kind of a, a pretty decent snapshot of that collection, mm. plus also his own creations, mm -hmm. um, going all the way back to the creation of his his studio, um, and it was actually really amazing, you know, kind of being with him and Steve and the international artists for the press conference because they all knew who he was like mm -hmm. he's he's a legend Fantastic. but they hadn't they had met him yes yeah. <laughs> and so, like they were meeting him in in the press conference yeah. and it was it was quite uh it was quite a moment like you you really you know kind of felt the sort of meeting of minds between mm -hmm. you know this local legend these international you know kind of legends and that's that's a, a lovely thing to be able to facilitate and and mm -hmm. then you know the the, you know, sneaker culture is, is about sharing, admiring, and even, um, so you have Mr. Sabotage, you have, is his name Mandeep? Yeah, Mandeep Chopra, yeah, who's Mandeep. the founder of Limited Edition, you know, here and, in and his And his collection, like, so so the pair of of uh, Nike airbags is from his personal collection. Mm -hmm. uh, he owns, a, he owns a lot of sneaker stores here, and just over the years, he's pulled stuff aside from his personal collection that's just his that is not displayed hmm. a lot of a lot, that's another thing about collectors is they're so excited to have that opportunity to actually display them for the public to see because it just sits in their house yeah. or, or in their yeah. recording studio well let like, me ask you about that because you mentioned there's over a hundred limited edition mm -hmm. sneakers on display mm -hmm. how do you choose i mean what what is it you're looking for that you think yes that can go into sneakertopia what is it you're looking for Okay, I'll I'll give one example. So uh, with JJ Lin's um, uh, yep. his collection, the Canto Pop Mando <laughs> Pop singer. Yeah, everybody knows him in this part of the world. Yeah, yeah, we 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 know him all over the world. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. And to be modest yeah. and to uh, uh, communicate with him and have this conversation and have him sending pictures of his sneakers that he's pulled and then I'm curating from his collection and we're having a whole conversation about 
okay, so first, this is going to feel like my living room, or this is like my man cave. This is the, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to lend you guys artwork. I've got this Supreme uh, uh, Louis Vuitton trunk. Like, okay, so what goes with, what would match, right. what would feel the vibe and tone? So it's like when you're curating, it's based on the totality of where it is, how it's going to be seen, and the feeling that, the uh that the visitor is going to have an experience in each section as they are in that section and as they flow to the next section and leave that section yeah exactly um max is in the studio with us my son our intern 13 years old hey max sneaker crazy and he's got a question for you um how how has the newer generation inspired you across the years how is a newer generation inspired in, in terms of um the buyers or the makers in terms of influencers or uh different different people different collectors how has it inspired you it changes with generations doesn't it i mean it, it, my it, last my last uh connection was skateboarding in california in the 80s when i was in college there right mm-hmm. and, and vans right that's mm-hmm. what we had so but it's changed it changes generation generationally yeah. somewhat doesn't it? yes um, I'd say that the new generation has inspired me in three different ways. One in the, um, which is probably the most important, the one that, that, that gives me goosebumps, is in the, uh, the understanding of finance and money and the currency of investing. That, for me, is like, when I see that talking about stock market may just, just, it's just, it's, it's fog. But when you put it in the context of sneakers, like they get it, they <laughs> totally get it. Yeah. Um, uh, I've attended and actually even hosted at uh, a, a few different sneaker conventions at our sneaker topia in LA. And some of these young men at the table are like 15, 17 years old. They have a, st- Wow, they're 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 fanny pack and backpack jam with cash on the table. They've got fifty thousand dollars worth of sneakers, Rolex on. I'm like, oh my, god. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like what am I seeing here? <laughs> um, yeah, and and then um, uh, second that I get most uh, most excited about the new generation is that there's there are young designers. Uh, Mm -hmm. whether they're designing their own hoodies and t-shirts, customizing their own sneakers. uh, It's, it's just, it's phenomenal. And and, and your son was one of your inspirations, right? Yes, my son, my son was one of my inspirations because he was, he was buying and selling and trading back when there was just eBay and Craigslist. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I've told the story a couple of times, but, he was coming, he came home from school, came home from school, do your homework, have dinner. It's like 7.30, he's leaving the house with a shoebox. I'm like, well, where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm going to meet uh, John. And I'm like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> so I drive him there. He makes me park across the street. He goes and sees the guy. They talk for like two minutes. He comes back with two boxes. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> what kind of deal is going on here? What just happened? <laughs> this is happening in Singapore now. This exactly. Kind of this is happening, is happening globally now. Yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you, Honor, about that because this is the interesting thing to me. You think of sneaker, Sneakertopia and you think, oh, it's just for kids. But then you think, hang on a second, as you mentioned, 100, 150 years, when these guys showed me the photo of the Nikes from Back to the Future 2, I'm going. Mm-hmm. And then when I think of the Air Jordans from the 80s, I, I'm going, this is actually an exhibition that is completely multi-generational on it. It really is. And and both in terms of the presentation of the sneakers, but also all of the amazing artists, you know, kind of sports stars and whatnot mm-hmm. that are in it. We've we've got people who are legends from the 80s, obviously, you know, kind of Michael Jordan, LeBron James is very central to the exhibition, just beat the, you know, kind of all-time uh, kind mm-hmm. of NBA uh, kind of record. We've got you know, kind of uh, skateboarders who are just coming through now, very young skateboarders, you know, kind of focused on, uh, in the show, but also the artists, 
you know, kind of like uh, there's, mm. as uh, we heard earlier, there's 17 Singapore or Singapore-based artists, 13 international artists, and they do cross generations. We've got some of the uh, kind of the street artists who are really part of the kind of OG kind of generation of street artists in Singapore that came through in the late 80s and the 90s in the show. And then super young artists, you know, kind of who are not even 20 yet, uh, kind of who are, you know, having their first gallery, you know, kind of exhibitions yeah. alongside legends of street art like Tommy Lim, you know, kind of who's joined us from the, the States, uh, Smolik who focuses on sustainability and her work, who's joining us from Montreal. So, you know, it, it really is a kind of international kind of multi-generational show. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because the it's not just a bunch of sneakers and cases it's mm. artwork it's, absolutely uh, I, I it's was, videos it's it's uh, films, multi-dimensional yeah. like you I, say. I was just about to mention yeah. the artwork so like when you talk about um cross-generational you have the you have the artists that have um created and prepared their their actual art for display and then we have artwork that's curated from collectors mm. from their personal collection jj lynn has his banksy in there Mm -hmm. um um wow. i was i was looking up his name uh do you do you know his name the one with the futura um yeah exactly we've got a, a stunning futura kind of in the in the uh futura one of the absolute godfathers of street art from the states in the 1970s yeah that's the banksy from jj lynn yeah. that's a really good banksy too you know wow. kind of not not all you know, kind of works that you're going to see by him are amazing, but that's a yeah. really good one. Yeah. Um, it's shown in, in the gallery with the so, Tommy so, Lim, and so it's the Futura gorgeous. is from this guy. Well, this yeah, so this is from the Culture Story. The Futura that we've got in the exhibition is from a collector called The Culture Story, Ning and her dad. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and they've they've lent us a couple of works, mm -hmm. Singapore-based uh, kind of collectors um, in that gallery. Uh, kind of uh, that uh, we're, we're seeing there on the screen. Um, yeah. So, yeah, extraordinary, you know, kind of blue chip art alongside, you know, kind of really the history of, mm. of um, the moment where Sneakertopia, oh, where sneakers became, you know, kind of a phenomena. And so I do think there is something in this exhibition for everyone. And, and on that point, I'm fascinated. I can't wait to go, by the way, but I'm fascinated by the cultural, the pop cultural crossover. Like you mentioned Back to the Future 2 there. They've shown me some shots with movies. So you talk about the movie crossovers in, in mm -hmm. some examples. Like, could you give me some of them? Because I'm fascinated by that. McFly, I guess. Um, you have Space Jam. You've got, uh, you've got uh, Back to the Future. We've got artwork by McFly that has... Um, uh, movie his his interpretation and inspir inspired by movies but his sneaker interpretation of it right. from uh pulp fiction which is the shoe addiction it's, it's the classic with their repose mm. yes but the um um uh ali may who is a, is is a sneaker designer he's got her posed like in his drawing like uma thurman and the colored and the, the poster looks just like the Pulp Fiction, but it's called Chew Addiction. Oh, um, he's got got the E.T. Uh, movie poster uh, with Michael Jordan says MJ instead of E.T. It's it's just can't yeah. wait, can't wait to it's see great. it. It's it's, it is a fantastic uh, exhibit. Max and I went down uh, the other day for the media preview, and we didn't want to leave. Like we just wanted to keep <laughs> going back and looking. We <laughs> we took a million pictures, right? Obviously, <laughs> as as one would do. Um, but at the end of it is a, a pleasant supplies prize which is there's a place you can buy merch mm. you yeah, can buy yes. shoes you can buy t-shirts you can buy hats you can buy all kinds of stuff by the various artists who are represented mm. and and that's and and that's actually worth mentioning to not just for commercial reasons but the curation of that shop is 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 that a lot of thought has gone into it mr sabotage has got you know kind of some of his items uh, on show he doesn't do retail so this mm. is really quite yeah. special uh, JJ Lin's uh, lifestyle label SMG, you know, kind of is in the shop. Plus, we've got these beautiful custom-made uh, kind of T-shirts by some of the artists. You know, mm -hmm. kind of uh, these are one-offs. You can only buy them in that retail shop. Beautiful collection of you know, kind of footwear curated by uh, Mandeep Chopra from Limited Edition. So it's, yeah. it's special. I, I have to say yeah. the uh, the prices are not cheap so it's if you think edition. you're going to get a bargain you're going to get a limited edition something you might want to have yes. and hold and, and hopefully we'll gain value. an investment and if an i'm guessing also on that okay. point all right yeah. so uh, that's my yeah. perspective perception. so yes the prices yeah. aren't cheap but there's items across the board like yeah. you don't have to buy a 1500 statue like there's 
there's t-shirts, there's books. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. There's there's some for everybody. Yeah, that's for everybody. Yeah. And I'm guessing this gives support in some cases to the local artists. Absolutely. Right? Yes, it's yeah. a showcase yeah. for it's, them. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I, I should mention, too, uh, two of the local artists have teamed up with Action City to create uh, toys, one off, you know, kind of yeah. uh, limited edition, um, and so those are in direct support of the practice of the, uh, the nice. local artists. I um, love well, so We are excited to have you both here. We do have to leave it now, but uh, oh, I wanted to know what Max's favorite part was. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, Max, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Max, the spotlight is on you. The Air Mags were probably my favorite because <laughs> they have been a big inspiration for me in terms of my um, speak uh, sneaker love and. I, I really, I really love those shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and on that point, briefly, your timing is perfect because I just saw the trailer this week for the new Air movie. Have you seen this trailer? Oh, no, I haven't. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, the yeah. story of the Air Jordan. Oh, Even okay. the trailer gave me goosebumps. I'm yeah. sure you know all about it. I saw it last night. No, my, my... You saw the film? So the trailer. Oh, right. my, my best friend and business partner is in that film. Marlon, oh, Marlon, Marlon Wayans. Oh, really? Yeah. Marlon Wayans. It's I'm not... his, so my background is film and TV. I'm his producing partner for all Unscripted. I saw that. Well, that's a whole other yeah. podcast. <laughs> you know, you know, work with a Jack. <laughs> join us virtually. Uh, yeah. Join us virtually from the U.S., huh? Yeah, but okay. uh, honestly, this trailer yeah. gave me goosebumps. Awesome. Yeah. It looks fantastic. All Very right, friendly. folks. We got to leave it there. But thanks again for, for coming in. Steve Harris, CEO of Sneakertopia, and Honor Harger, VP of Attractions at Marina Bay Sands. 